for the psychological theory called naive realism see naive realism psychology in philosophy of mind naive realism also known as direct realism common sense realism or perceptual realism is the idea that the senses provide us with direct awareness of objects as they really are objects obey the laws of physics and retain all their properties whether or not there is anyone to observe them they are composed of matter, occupy space and have properties, such as size, shape, texture, smell, taste and color, that are usually perceived correctly. In contrast, some forms of idealism claim that no world exists apart from mind-dependent ideas, and some forms of skepticism say we cannot trust our senses. Naive realism is known as direct as against indirect or representational realism when its arguments are developed to counter the latter position, also known as epistemological dualism, that our conscious experience is not of the real world but of an internal representation of the world. History For a history of direct realist theories, see Direct and Indirect Realism section History. Topic. Overview The naive realist theory may be characterized as the acceptance of the following five beliefs. There exists a world of material objects. Some statements about these objects can be known to be true through sense experience. These objects exist not only when they are being perceived but also when they are not perceived. The objects of perception are largely perception independent. These objects are also able to retain properties of the types we perceive them as having, even when they are not being perceived. Their properties are perception independent. By means of our senses, we perceive the world directly, and pretty much as it is. In the main, our claims to have knowledge of it are justified. In the area of visual perception in psychology, the leading direct realist theorist was J. J. Gibson. Other psychologists were heavily influenced by this approach, including William Mace, Claire Michaels, Edward Reed, Robert Shaw, and Michael Turvey. More recently, Carol Fowler has promoted a direct realist approach to speech perception. Among contemporary analytic philosophers who defended direct realism one might refer to, for example, Hilary Putnam, John McDowell, Galen Strawson, and John R. Searle. Searle, for instance, addresses the popular but perhaps mistaken assumption that we can only directly perceive our own subjective experiences, but never objects and states of affairs in the world themselves. According to Searle, it has influenced many thinkers to reject direct realism. But Searle contends that the rejection of direct realism is based on a bad argument, the argument from illusion, which in turn relies on vague assumptions on the nature or existence of sense data. Various sense data theories were deconstructed in 1962 by the British philosopher J. L. Austin in a book titled Sense and Sensibilia. Talk of sense data has been replaced by talk of representational perception in a broader sense, and scientific realists typically assume representational perception. But the assumption is philosophical, and arguably little prevents scientific realists from assuming direct perception, as in direct or naive realism. In a blog post on naive realism and color realism, Putnam sums up with the following words. Being an apple is not a natural kind in physics, but it is in biology, recall. Being complex and of no interest to fundamental physics isn't a failure to be real. Quote dot. I think green is as real as applehood. Simon Blackburn has argued that whatever positions they may take in books, articles or lectures, naive realism is the view of philosophers when they are off duty. <laughs> Topic. Naive and scientific realism or direct and indirect realism It is not uncommon to think of naive realism as distinct from scientific realism, which states that the universe contains just those properties that feature in a scientific description of it, not properties like color per se but merely objects that reflect certain wavelengths owing to their microscopic surface texture. This lack of supervenience of experience on the physical world has influenced many thinkers to reject naive realism as a physical theory. One should add, however, that naive realism does not claim that reality is only what we see, hear, etc. Likewise, scientific realism does not claim that reality is only what can be described by fundamental physics. It follows that the relevant distinction to make is not between naive and scientific realism but between direct and indirect realism. 
The direct realist claims that the experience of a sunset, for instance, is the real sunset that we directly experience. The indirect realist claims that our relation to reality is indirect, so the experience of a sunset is a subjective copy of what really is radiation as described by physics. But the direct realist does not deny that the sunset is radiation, the experience has a hierarchical structure, and the radiation is part of what amounts to the direct experience. An example of a scientific realist is John Locke, who held the world only contains the primary qualities that feature in a corpuscularian scientific account of the world see corpuscular theory, and that other properties were entirely subjective, depending for their existence upon some perceiver who can observe the objects. The modern philosopher of science Howard Sankey argues for a form of scientific realism which has common sense realism as one of its foundations. Topic. Realism and quantum physics Realism in physics refers to the fact that physical systems must have definite properties when measured or observed. Physics until the 19th century was implicitly and sometimes explicitly based on philosophical realism. Scientific realism in classical physics has remained compatible with the naive realism of everyday thinking on the whole, but there is no consistent way to visualize the world underlying quantum theory in terms of ideas of the everyday world. The general conclusion is that in quantum theory naive realism, although necessary at the level of observations, fails at the microscopic level. Experiments such as the stern gerlach experiment and quantum phenomena such as complementarity lead quantum physicists to conclude that W e have no satisfactory reason for ascribing objective existence to physical quantities as distinguished from the numbers obtained when we make the measurements which we correlate with them. There is no real reason for supposing that a particle has at every moment a definite, but unknown, position which may be revealed by a measurement of the right kind. On the contrary, we get into a maze of contradiction as soon as we inject into quantum mechanics such concepts as carried over from the language and philosophy of our ancestors. It would be more exact if we spoke of making measurements of this, that, or the other type instead of saying that we measure this, that, or the other physical quantity. It is no longer possible to adhere to both the principle of locality that distant objects cannot affect local objects, and counterfactual definiteness, a form of ontological realism implicit in classical physics. Some interpretations of quantum mechanics hold that a system lacks an actualized property until it is measured, which implies that quantum systems exhibit a non-local behavior. Bell's theorem proved that every quantum theory must either violate locality or counterfactual definiteness. This claim has given rise to a contentious debate of the interpretation of quantum mechanics. Although locality and realism, in the sense of counterfactual definiteness, are jointly false, it is possible to retain one of them. The majority of working physicists discard counterfactual definiteness in favor of locality, since non-locality is held to be contrary to relativity. The implications of this stance are rarely discussed outside of the microscopic domain but the thought experiment of Schrödinger's cat illustrates the difficulties presented. As quantum mechanics is applied to larger and larger objects, even a one-ton bar, proposed to detect gravity waves, must be analyzed quantum mechanically, while in cosmology a wave function for the whole universe is written to study the Big Bang. It is difficult to accept the quantum world as somehow not physically real, so. Quantum mechanics forces us to abandon naive realism, though it can also be argued that the counterfactual definiteness realism of physics is a much more specific notion than general philosophical realism. W. E. have to give up the idea of realism to a far greater extent than most physicists believe today, Anton Zeilinger. By realism, he means the idea that objects have specific features and properties that a ball is red, that a book contains the works of Shakespeare, or that an electron has a particular spin. For objects governed by the laws of quantum mechanics, like photons and electrons, it may make no sense to think of them as having well-defined characteristics. Instead, what we see may depend on how we look. Topic. Virtual reality and realism Virtual realism is closely related to the above theories. In the research paper The Reality of Virtual Reality it is proposed that 
Virtuality is itself a bona fide mode of reality, and that virtual reality must be understood as things, agents and events that exist in cyberspace. These proposals resolve the incoherences found in the ordinary uses of these terms. Virtual reality, though based on recent information technology, does not refer to mere technological equipment or purely mental entities, or to some fake environment as opposed to the real world, but that it is an ontological mode of existence which leads to an expansion of our ordinary world. The emergence of teleoperation and virtual environments has greatly increased interest in Synthetic experience, a mode of experience made possible by both these newer technologies and earlier ones, such as telecommunication and sensory prosthetics. Understanding synthetic experience must begin by recognizing the fallacy of naive realism and with the recognition that the phenomenology of synthetic experience is continuous with that of ordinary experience. The alleged necessity to recognize a fallacy of naive realism seems, however, unwarranted. One should not be misled by the word naive, for a naive realist normally understands what a picture is, that the depicted face on a photograph, for instance, is not the real face, and that the things seen on a computer screen are symbols or electronic depictions, and so on. A majority of the population arguably subscribes to naive common sense notions of reality, without a recognizable loss in capacity to interact in cyberspace. Topic see also topic References topic Sources and further reading Alstrom, Sidney E. The Scottish Philosophy and American Theology, Church History, Vol. 24, No. 3 Sep. 1955, pp. 257–272 in JSTOR Cuneo, Terence, and René van Woudenberg, eds. The Cambridge Companion to Thomas Reed 2004, Gibson, J.J. 1972. A Theory of Direct Visual Perception. In J. Royce, W. Rosenboom, eds. The Psychology of Knowing. New York, Gordon and Breach. Graham, Gordon. Scottish Philosophy in the Nineteenth Century. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, 2009. Online. Marsden, George M. Fundamentalism and American Culture, 2006. Excerpt and text search essay. Grave, Common Sense in the Encyclopedia of Philosophy, ed. Paul Edwards, Collier Macmillan, 1967. Peter J. King, 100 Philosophers, 2004, New York, Barron's Educational Books, ISBN 0-7641-2791-8. Selections from the Scottish Philosophy of Common Sense, ed., by G. A. Johnston, 1915, online, Essays by Thomas Reed, Adam Ferguson, James Beattie, and Dougald Stewart David Edwards and Stephen Wilcox, 1982. Some Gibsonian Perspectives on the Ways that Psychologists Use Physics PDF. Acta Psychologia. 52-147-163. doi.10.1016-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001-0001
63 1 to 3 133-155. DOI 10.1016-0001-69188-6-90060-0. PMID 3591430, CS1 maint, multiple names, authors list link, Nicholas Wolterstorff. Thomas Reed and the Story of Epistemology. Cambridge University Press, 2006. ISBN 0-521-53930-7 Nelson, Quee, 2007. The Slightest Philosophy Dog's Ear Publishing. ISBN 978-1-59858-378-6 J. L. Austin, 1962. Sense and Sensibilla. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0195003079 John R. Searle, 2015. Seeing Things as They Are, A Theory of Perception. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-938515-7. Topic. External links James Fieser, A Bibliography of Scottish Common Sense Philosophy. Theory of Knowledge, Naive Realism Naive Realism and the Argument from Illusion The Function of Conscious Experience Representationalism Naive Realism in Contemporary Philosophy The Science and Philosophy of Consciousness Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Epistemological Problems of Perception Physics and Common Sense, Reassessing the Connection in the Light of Quantum Theory Quantum Theory, Concepts and Methods Nature Journal, Physicists Bid Farewell to Reality Quantum Enigma, Physics Encounters Consciousness Virtual Realism The Reality of Virtual Reality IEEE Symposium on Research Frontiers in Virtual Reality, Understanding Synthetic Experience Must Begin with the Analysis of Ordinary Perceptual Experience Realism, Article from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Sense Data, Article from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Skepticism and the Veil of Perception, Book Defending Direct Realism. Pierre Le Morvan. Arguments Against Direct Realism and How to Counter Them. American Philosophical Quarterly 41, No. 3 2004, 221-234, pdf Stephen Lahar, Gestalt Isomorphism, 2003, paper criticizing direct realism A Direct Realist Account of Perceptual Awareness, Dissertation on Direct Realism Epistemological Debate on Psyche D. Mailing List A Cartoon Epistemology